welcome to Blueprint IoT. Today we're going to unbox the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. In case you missed the video about the unboxing of the Bamboo Lab A1, check it out to see how the bigger brother is doing. So let's get started. As soon as we open the box, we can see the same system as with the A1, which is this little like wrapper around the whole box or the uh, around the whole inside of the box so you can easily get out the whole box without any struggle so let's get the box down to the floor and pull out the printer as you can see the plastic wrapper is basically around all the insides not just the printer also all the accessory boxes and so on and they are fixed here the wrappers are fixed with a little bit of sticky tape so you need to remove it here and obviously as well on the other side to be able to pull. All right, as you just saw, it's helpful to fix basically the box with your shoes, with your feet, and then you can pull more easily and not like have the box come up with you and yeah, have a big struggle to get rid of it. Major difference that we can see here is that the A1 Mini is coming fully assembled in the box. We will check out in a second if it's really fully assembled, but as of right now, it's a complete printer. While with the A1, the normal A1, the bigger one, you, it comes only pre-assembled and you need to put together quite some parts. And that's definitely a significant difference here. Downside, if you want to transport it, maybe that's just me, but then you have this box that you need to transport while the A1 you can separate into, uh, let's say, multiple segments that are maybe easier to pack into a bag uh, if you need to take it on a flight or something. So here we can see the printer already, everything assembled so far. So let's get rid of the rest of the wrapper here and take a look at the cardboard. So first thing to notice, this is all just cardboard packaging material. While with the A1, there were some accessory boxes in, but I think the accessories are down here, including a huge dry bag all right, in here we actually find a little accessories box and let's take off the foam. And we can see big difference from A1 to A1 mini. You have only one pillar over here and you don't have the complete frame as with the A1, which is I think a more stable setup, but we will see over time how reliant or how precise the printer will be able to print. Taking a look at the accessory box, we will find some basics to basically get the nozzle unstuck, uh, Allen key and some grease to grease the, all the moving components of the printer and some other small screws, replacement screws and oil. On the other hand, what was stuck in here before, we have the, some filament to get started. Interestingly enough, the, the dry bag is not inside the filament but yeah, most likely just to avoid any moisture during CD freight, whatever, to, to basically, yeah, cause corrosion on the printer, I assume. And we have a spare, oh no, that's not the spare, I think that's the only one, PTFE tube to connect here to the printer head to then feed the filament into the printer. But let's remove the rest of the cardboard, which is super easy, no glue whatsoever. Also this just loosely stuck in there and it's gone and let's further remove all the parts I, I didn't remove any tape or something so that's really all just loosely stuck on there here we can slide open and we find the holder for the spool as well as the print plate already on the base plate or like the base plate already pre-assembled or magnetically mounted and let's unwrap the rest That's definitely stuck somewhere. A little tight pull and it's off. We have some cable ties here. 
So let's remove them next. Cable tie is gone. This block in the middle we can just push out. And then we are only left with some instructions here, which we will read in a second. Here we have just some safety guidelines. I guess we will skip those. And let's see how we assemble the spool holder. So it was not just a manual, also some stickers were included. I think that's quite cool. Everybody likes stickers. We have a quick start guide on the QR code and we have just some hints on how to clean the base plate. And yeah, as you can see here, I was not supposed to cut the cable tie. First, you should remove the access, the set access stabilizer, which we will do just now. I'm going to use the included Allen key to open those screws. It's supposed to be four screws. So let's do this fast forward. Taking a closer look on the screws, we can see there was some Loctite or something like this in there, some something to secure the screws in place. And the whole part here, the whole Z axis stabilizer is just packaging, which is kind of crazy to me. So yeah, it's completely injection molded, not printed. But yeah, you can see here that it was in the injection molding tool and here it was removed via those points. Kind of interesting and very, very solid. So I don't know if that's really needed, but it's cool that they secure it in a very nice way. So next up, I'm going to remove this foam pad and to do so, I will move the printer head and now it should be easily removable. Let's try that. Yes, here we go, easily off. And next step, we need to access the printer button. Next up, we need to tighten those three green screws or screw, screws marked in green to secure the heated bed in place. Generally speaking, Bamboo likes to do it to use the green colors for all the important instructions, which I think is quite nice to easily spot which screws you need to access, change, unscrew, tighten, whatever and what is the stuff that you should stick away from. So let's move on, remove all the plastic and turn the printer around. That's always kind of a bit of a dangerous maneuver to turn the printer as you will, yeah, hopefully not drop it from the table. I think with the A1, it was kind of easy because you could like put it really nicely on the table. With the A1 mini, as it's like not symmetrical, I think that could be a bit more of a challenge, but let's see. So I quickly decluttered the desk a little bit from all the packaging material. It's already quite a bit, so it was really nicely secured. You can see there's still some foam under the print bed. So let's turn the printer upside down and access those screws. So I settled on this position to access it from the bottom. So it's basically just laying on its back. If you do so, make sure to have those cables wired through this little gap here to not squeeze any cables or have any rocky position so let's just remove those additional foam blocks here which are also just like pushed in there not glued or whatsoever so let's try that here we go and the bottom one so now we can easily access the screws here so let's give it a try and just tighten it there are only three screws so you have four like kind of handlebars or support bars of the of the print bed but only three of them have screws so it's like not that you could tighten anything you're not supposed to so i'm not sure what's the purpose of them being loose during transport uh, but let's just follow the manual so those are the three screws as well allen key the big allen key that ships with the printer to tighten it's this one the one on the bottom and then if you look at from the top to the printer, the one right on the right upper corner. The one that you can't access, that's where there is no screw. So don't worry about that. So next up is the so-called purge wiper, which is this little device, which is basically cleaning your nozzle, wiping your nozzle as soon as you purged old filament or like some flow calibration whatsoever is the reason. 
very nicely done are the little bags here for the screws so it's written on the bag which screw is meant for what here this one for the perch wiper they may be for the scraper and for the spool holder so you can't mix anything up and i assume now we will yeah just slide it on there and then screw it in place so you can use the bigger allen screw the big one the uh, allen key that's coming with the box to screw the screw in place to secure it in place I decided to not turn the printer around again I decided to just lift the whole printer head on its axis you need a little bit of force but I think it's no problem because you need to you need a bit more force because you basically need to move this threaded screw here that's moving the whole head so you need to apply a bit force I just push down here and then slide it up the whole arm which was a bit forced but no problem and then you can easily access the screw the spool holder itself needs to be mounted via this little plate here and I think that yeah the drawing is a bit confusing or can be misunderstood so it's supposed to face towards the column so when you look at the column you can the main column the set axis column you can quite see quite well that those screws are at the outside so you have to place it like this it's not that it's clicking in place or something so you need to really screw it on top this gap is meant to be there so you can slide on the arm the support arm for the spool so the first screw is in place don't be surprised if it's a bit harder to screw it in because you see this little blue mass here that's the like um, screw secure or loctite yeah, that's a brand but like just to secure the screw in place against any vibration or something that's a bit more heavy quite a bit more heavy than a normal screw to screw in so that's supposed to be like that don't be surprised i secured it in place with one screw let's do the second one and then we can slide on the arm so that's all done so we can now slide on the arm that's also something a bit confusing in the in the manual I mean on the second picture you can see it but here it's a bit like which way to go there's only one way to go except you mounted the holding plate in the wrong way but it needs to stick out of the printer not inwards so next up is the PTFE tube so those connectors are push-in connectors so you simply push in and by the pressure now it's locked I can pull on it it's tight if you want to remove it you need to press down this little black part to release the tube on the other side we can now decide which one we want to go I think the manual is indicating the upper left position but I could be wrong about this but it doesn't matter you can use any of those connectors last but not least the manual is highlighting to connect the cable to the PTFE tube as you can see the PTFE tube is kind of rugged and sturdy and is forming this nice little loop here and we are supposed to connect this cable otherwise if it's dangling down here it could yeah get entangled in the printer head or whatsoever in your part whatever and yeah the printer would just rip it off so make sure to just connect it up here in the clip cable connected to the tube everything done I think last thing to do is to plug it in and turn it on what I want to point out here pretty nice I think something to take a picture of or put it right next to your printer is the minimum distance or like clearance you need in front and in the back of the printer as the print plate itself will move back and forth so I find myself sometimes wondering which like distance I should keep and I think that's a good number to to recognize of course we need to or can to can connect it to the Wi-Fi afterwards to be able to connect it to our app and to transfer all the basically all the print files and so on and you can see here it's 2.4 gigahertz only so last step turn it on on the back next to the cable you have a switch and here we go printer turned on nothing happens okay okay here we go just took a couple of seconds to boot and the familiar sound appears and we can just get started with the software all right I just went through the settings and yeah select your language select your region stuff like this now we come to the password and yeah this is super super tiny 
I mean, I will put an iPhone 12 next to it. It's not the plus, it's the default iPhone 12. So you can imagine how crazy tiny those keyboard buttons are. Uh, it's a touch screen, it's all nice. It's actually more easy to hit the right you have letters as you think and that the password is clear text is also helping to correct any mistakes but i mean honestly the price of this machine is absolutely incredible i bought it in the black friday sale and so nothing is sponsored whatsoever i paid the standard price at the black friday sale and it's like 180 euros so that's like in dollars maybe less than 200 dollars so it's an amazing price. So I will not complain about the display being too small, but it's just something to be prepared for. Maybe have a stylus or something to have an easier input here. So next up you have the usual calibrations. I will skip them because that's not the final destination of my printer, but afterwards you're ready to go. And for the first print, we have the test filament right here and you just push it in and do the process on the printer to basically guide you step by step how to like load the filament and unload it one last hint here is you have the same plastic spool holder as you have with the a1 as you might have seen in my six month uh, review or 380 hour review of the a1 i had quite some trouble using paper or cardboard spools which you get quite commonly if you don't want to spend a fortune on filament on this holder because it's like getting stuck a little bit and then it pulling sideways. I will drop in a clip here of this phenomenon on my, on this effect on my A1. To avoid this, I just printed a little extra like sleeve onto this little holder. So it can, you have plastic on plastic friction instead of cardboard on plastic friction. The print blade itself is very similar to the A1. I have a feeling that it's a little bit more grainy like I, I have a feeling that the a1 has a bit more of a wider pattern i will make sure to have a side by side comparison soon and it's all but it's all magnetic as on the a1 to remove the print plate to squeeze it to get rid of the part and you just pop it in honestly to pop it in here is much more my style as with the a1 because here you have like a proper point to push against but with the a1 you can easily push away this part in the middle because it's a plastic part that is not very strong and you can yeah it's very flexible so this is like very clear positioning of the base plate which i appreciate quite a bit final thing left to do is doing all the calibration this takes a while like about 20 30 minutes depending on what calibrations you're actually executing and then you're all done and you can start printing I, you see I have already set up a second A1 here side by side and actually I did a couple of tests on depending on different printing speed, how much time difference is it in reality if you're printing in 100 and 124 or 166% speed and also how that's influencing the print quality. That will be a complete separate video coming out soon. Final thing left to say is that I'm already a couple of hours into printing with the A1 minis and what I really, really like and figured out only now is the orientation of the print spool, of the filament spool, is that you can basically feed the wire from below, which is actually, I think, a bit more of a natural flow for the filament and not so much of a bending radius as with the A1. So I think maybe the problem I described earlier with like the, the spool getting stuck won't be that much of a problem, but I will take a look. So thanks for watching and I will come out soon with a comparison video between the A1 and the A1 mini and also about the different printing speeds and also I have another new printer coming in soon so make sure to be subscribed to not miss any of that. Thanks for watching again and see you next time.